This video is on section 3.4 notes, prisms. So first, to start us off, we're going to go through some definitions. Um, the first is a prism itself, which is a solid figure or a 3D figure having at least one pair of parallel surfaces that create a uniform cross-section. So you can see this is our prism. We have the top and the bottom. That's what they're talking about when they say parallel surfaces. Um, and a cross section is just like a slice, kind of like you're slicing bread and then you pull out a piece of bread and it kind of like looks like the shape of the top and the bottom. Um, that's what they mean. The faces are all the polygons that form the prism. So a polygon is just like a shape. Um, and so we have on top, this one looks like a hexagon on the top. Those are what those faces are, those polygons. And then on the sides, we have rectangles. The bases are the faces that create the uniform cross section of the prism. Um, so I think of that as like the top and the bottom if I orient it um, that way. Um, but you'll notice that you've got the bases, which are a specific shape, and then all of the other sides um, end up being rectangles. Uh, they give the prism its name. So this would be um, a hexagonal prism because the bases are hexagons. Um, and then you can see we'll go through these, but other types of prisms based on the name of the base. The lateral faces, lateral means side. So the faces that do not create the uniform cross section um, are just, you know, like the side polygons. Um, edges are the sides of the polygon, so that's um, not like the rectangle, but like the just the edge along the rectangle, so kind of like where the edges come together. The edges of the rectangle come together, we call edges. Vertices are the corners. And then the altitude is the perpendicular distance between the bases, which we would think of as height, but they call it altitude. Um, so here's a diagram if you ever need to go back and look at that. We have um, a couple examples of prisms, and this is not an exhaustive list. This is just to give you an idea of a few of them. So we have a rectangular prism. Um, that means that we've got um, the bases are rectangles. In this case, maybe they'd even look a little bit square. Um, but bases are rectangles, and you can see that the prism is going um, up and down. Um, over here we have an example of a rectangular prism where all of the sides are squares and that's a cube. You call it a cube when that happens, um, but otherwise they'd be rectangular prisms. A triangular prism um, is just a prism where the bases are triangles and then from there you have rectangles um, on all the sides. Um, it's also possible for a prism to be kind of flipped on its side, and so it doesn't feel like it's going straight up and down. And then it's oftentimes students get a little confused with this. They don't know what to call it then. So just I always imagine prisms like I have to figure out what the base is. I know that the sides are going to be um, those other faces are going to be those lateral faces are always going to be the rectangles. Um, and so I look for what shape the base is and I think about it sitting on that base, kind of like this, sitting on the base. All right, um, another example of a prism is um, a trapezoidal prism where the bases are trapezoids and then again the lateral faces are still rectangles. So we did have, um, this was a hexagonal prism. Um, here we don't have it like labeled with its own specific picture, but this um, base right here has five sides, so that would be a pentagonal prism. And then you can even you can get an octagonal prism, you can get like a 15 gone prism, you know, like it's you can just keep going with it. So um, now we're going to go ahead and calculate surface area and volume of prisms. So they have two ways of calculating surface area. One is to just look at the lateral surface area. And so when they're working with that, they're just talking about um, just the lateral sides and not including the bases, not including the top and the bottom. So if you have this pentagonal prism, you're not using the pentagon on the top, you're not using the pentagon on the bottom, you're just using the five rectangles that go around the lateral sides. So this would be the lateral surface area. And the way that you calculate that is you do P times H. P is the perimeter of the base. H is the altitude. You can think of it as the height. For the total surface area, you're going to look for the lateral surface area and add 2 times A, and A is the area of the base. And then for the volume, volume is A times H, where A is the area of the base, and then H is that altitude or that height. 
Okay, so here's our example problem. It says find the lateral surface area, total surface area, and volume of the triangular prism shown below. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take this base and kind of draw it. I'm drawing it similar to the way that it is currently drawn. Um, so that it's easier for me to label all the sides. But to do this, I am going to have to know um, the area of the base uh, to be able to find the volume. Um, and I'm going to have to know the perimeter of the base, and so I might as well go ahead and find those things. So the area of the base um, is the area of a triangle, and the area of a triangle is one-half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. So one-half times the base of the triangle is eight, the height of the triangle is six. So one-half times eight times six is 24. And then the perimeter is 6 plus 8 plus 10. So that's 14 plus 10. That's also 24. Okay. All right. So the lateral surface area is P times H, which is perimeter of the base. times the altitude, also known as the height. And this is, now we're talking about the prism itself. We're no longer talking about the triangle. Um, you don't always have to write this out. I'm just writing this out because it's my first example. So I'm going to say the lateral surface area is going to be 24 for the perimeter, 15 inches for the height of the prism, 24 times 15, 360. Since this is an area, I know that my units are going to be squared, inches times inches. Inches squared, 360 inches squared. Okay, uh, for my total surface area, I'm going to do the lateral surface area plus two times the area of the base. So this is lateral surface area plus two times the area of the base. So I've got 360 inches squared plus the area of the base was 24, so plus 2 times 24 408. Um, again, that's total surface area, and since it's an area, it's going to be inches squared, units squared. Okay, volume is A times H which is area of the base times the altitude, also known as the height of the prism. So this is going to be the area of the base is 24. The height of the prism is 15. We've already done this calculation. We did it right up here, 360. This time we're talking about volume. And so this is inches times inches times inches, which is inches cubed. So there's our lateral surface area, total surface area, volume. Okay, um, let's go ahead and try another one. So here we have a trapezoidal prism, but it's laying on its side. It's not sitting on the base. It's sitting on one of the lateral sides. So just like I did um, with the last problem, I'm going to go ahead and draw the trapezoid out. Now, I don't like to see trapezoids oriented like this. I like to see them um, kind of sitting on their parallel sides. Um, because I always think of that as like the base of a trapezoid. And so that's how I'm going to draw it here. 
Uh, it'll help me when I'm recognizing um, just the basis so I can find the area in the perimeter of my trapezoid. Because they want us to find the lateral surface area, the total surface area, and the volume here. So here's my trapezoid. The top base of the trapezoid is 4 feet. The bottom base of the trapezoid is 12 feet. So 4 feet, 12 feet. And then I need to know the height of my trapezoid. And so 4, 12, I need to know what this is. And this is 15 feet. Oh, sorry, you guys couldn't see it. So 4 feet, 12 feet, I need to know what this is, which is going to be 15 feet. OK, so 15 right here. OK, so I need the perimeter um, of the trapezoid. I guess I'll label this diagonal side, too, in that case. I need the perimeter, and I need the area of the trapezoid. Uh, the area we learned for um, a trapezoid is um, the first base plus the second base divided by 2 multiplied by the height. So we said the first base plus the second base divided by 2 times the height. And so that's going to be 4 plus 12 over 2 times 15. OK. So if you have one of these calculators, you can type it in exactly like that. Um, to type in the fraction, you hit the green button, and then y equals uh, 4 plus 12 divided by 2 times 15, yep, is 120. OK. The perimeter is 17 plus 4 plus 15 plus 12, 48. OK, so first for the lateral surface area, we're going to do the perimeter multiplied by the altitude or the height. So the perimeter is 48. The height of the prism, remember this is the base. It's kind of sitting um, on the lateral side instead of sitting on the base. And so that means the height of the prism is that 10 feet. If I were to picture picking up the prism and flipping it over and actually having it sit on the base. So 48 times 10 is 480. This is surface area, so it's inches squared. The total surface area is going to be lateral area plus 2 times the area of the base. The lateral area is 480. 2 times the area of the base is 120. 480 plus 2 times 120 is 720. Uh, total surface area, so inches squared. Sorry, I said inches, but these are both feet. Feet squared, feet squared, there we go. OK, and then volume. Um, volume is area of the base times the height, area of the base times the altitude. And so the area of the base is 120. The altitude, we said, was 10. And so that's 1,200 feet cubed, because we're talking about volume. OK. Um, cubes are special, and so they gave you um, some more specific um, formulas to use if you work with a cube. It doesn't mean that you can't use the previous formula. You can. You can still use lateral areas, perimeter um, of the base times the altitude. You can still use total surface area is lateral area plus two times the area of the base. You can still use volume as area of the base times the height. They will still work. 
these formulas will just make your life a little bit easier if you're looking for the lateral surface area, total surface area, and volume of a cube. So here um, they're, they're doing all of these based off, based off of S, where S is the length of a side. So in this example, um, S is 7. So if you want a lateral surface area, you just have to do 4 times 7 squared. So 4 times 49. The lateral surface area is 196 centimeters squared. The total surface area is 6 times S squared. So that's 6 times 49. which is 294 centimeters squared. And the volume is S to the third power. And I happen to know that one. Seven to the third power is 343. And so that's centimeters cubed for volume. So you can use these, but you could use the other ones too. They'll get you the same answer. Okay. And then last, um, we have some problems like this where you're kind of applying what you've learned. So we're going to take um, some problems and calculate either, you know, surface area or volume um, and then apply it in kind of a word problem where we're going to maybe need some other conversions. So this first problem says that we are going to calculate the volume of water needed to fill a lap pool that is in this shape. Um, and so we're going to fill the pool with water, so we're not going to fill it with cubic feet. Uh, we're going to fill it with gallons. So we're going to find the volume in cubic feet first, and then we're going to have to um, convert from cubic feet into gallons. So here, if you look at this um, shape, I can see that it's not sitting on the base. It's sitting on one of the lateral sides. Um, or one of the lateral faces. The base is this side right here, and the base looks to be a trapezoid, which is again, if I wanna see the parallel sides of the trapezoid, um, this side is parallel to this side, and then straight up, and then there's kind of your slanted side right there. And so I'm gonna draw the trapezoid kind of oriented the way that my brain is used to seeing them. That just makes my brain a little bit more comfortable when I do the problem. Not, not that my brain loves this problem because this trapezoid is pretty crazy looking, but. Okay, so the little parallel side right up here, three feet down here is 11 feet. So three feet, 11 feet. Um, then the height right here of the trapezoid is 25 yards. And hopefully you picked up on that, that I said feet and then I said yards. So 25 yards, we have to convert 25 yards into feet. So 25 yards, I'm going to convert this feet and yards. I know that one yard is the equivalent of three feet. So 25 times three is 75 feet. So I'm going to use 75 feet as the length of this side. Okay, so for the volume, I have to do the area of the base times the altitude of the prism. And so the area of the base is going to be, for the tra uh, trapezoid, base one plus base two divided by two times the height or times the altitude of the trapezoid. Okay. So 3 plus 11 divided by 2 times 75, 525. So that's the area of the base. 
So volume is going to be 525, there's the area of the base, times the height of the prism. And the height of the prism is not the same as the height of the trapezoid. So if I imagine that the prism is sitting on the base, the base is this trapezoid. If I take this prism and I flip it over so it's sitting on its base, then the height of this prism is 12 feet. So 525 times 12. Sixty three hundred or six thousand three hundred, and we've got cubic feet. So now what I need to do, because I, I know the volume of the pool, but I need to know how much water would fill that. And so I need to take the cubic feet and convert it into gallons. So six thousand cubic feet. And I need to convert it into gallons. And so one cubic foot is 7.48 gallons. 7.48 gallons is one cubic foot. So the cubic feet cancel. 6,300 times 7.48 is 47,124 gallons. Um, so depending on how my math lab tells you to round these, if they told you to just write an integer, then there's my integer, that's my whole numbers. If they told you to use significant figures, um, then you could have two I think in that case you would just have two um, significant figures, so 47,000. Um, if they told you to round to like three significant figures um, because of this one, 47,100 gallons. Um, so just depend, so pay attention to what um, my math lab tells you as far as rounding goes because they'll kind of direct you and what which answer you should leave. Okay. Um, So the next example says a steel um, or a piece of steel, any piece of steel, there we go, weighs approximately 0.283 pounds per cubic inch. Suppose we need to find the weight of the steel bar shown below. So we want to find this steel bar. So we want to find the volume in inches first, and then we'll go ahead from there and um, convert it into pounds. So here, this prism uh, would not have a name. <laughs> it wouldn't be like trapezoidal prism or rectangular prism or triangular prism because the shape of the base is like this funky shape here. And then you can still see all of those lateral faces. They're still tr um, rectangles, just like every other prism. So they always work out the same in that regard. But here, this base is kind of funky. So. Um, what I did is I put a picture of the cross section for you guys so that we could label it. And then I'm going to go through and, and just label as many of these dimensions as I can so that I can find the area of this thing. So I know that across the entire bottom, um, I can see is six. That's six inches. Um, this is three quarters of an inch or three fourths of an inch. And it says this is three fourths of an inch right here as well. So they kind of, what they did is they kind of like split it in half like this. And then they said the top is three fourths and the bottom is three fourths. And so that means that the whole thing, if it's three fourths and three fourths, that makes 1.5. And I'll just double check that. 3 fourths plus 3 fourths is 1.5. Okay, so I know that, that the whole length of that side is 1.5. This shorter piece right here is 3 fourths. Um, they, they didn't show the measurements right here, but they showed them back here. 2 inches, 1 inch. So 2 inches, 1 inch. Um, if that's 2 and that's 1, that's three inches on the sides, and the whole thing has to be six. So that means this middle piece right here is just three. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this up 
into smaller sections because I know that if I'm looking for volume, I need the area of the base times the height or the altitude of the entire prism. So I need the area of this base. So this part right here is square-ish, rectangular. So this is a length of 2 times 1.5 times 1.5. Uh, 2 times 1.5 is 3. So that's the area of that piece is 3. Um, this is 3 times 3 quarters. 3 times 3 quarters or 3 fourths. Uh, 3 times 3 fourths. 2.25. Okay, and then this part over here is 1 times 1.5. 1 times 1.5 is just 1.5. Okay, so for the overall area of this, I'm just going to add all three of those up. And then I find that the area of my base... The area of the base is 6.75. All right, so for the volume, we're going to do the area of the base, 6.75, multiplied by the altitude of the prism, which is 18. This is the height of the prism. 6.75 times 18, 121.5. Cubic inches. And so now what we want to do is we want to convert this into pounds um, to see how much that steel bar would weigh. So one cubic inch is uh, 0.283 pounds per one cubic inch or 0.283 pounds per cubic inch. So I'm going to say 0.283 pounds per one cubic inch. So 121.5 times 0 0.283, 34.3845 pounds. And we would be paying attention um, to what my math lab says as far as rounding. So if they said round to the nearest tenth, one decimal place to the nearest tenth, then I would say 34.4. If they said round to significant figures, um, then this has three significant figures, so I would say 34.4. If they said round to the nearest whole number, the nearest integer, then I would say 34. So I would just pay attention to what... Um, my math lab wants me to do as far as rounding goes. But there's the answer my calculator gave me and I could go from there.